One super neat thing about escalators is that even when they're turned off, they still function as a regular old staircase. But what about your phone? Why does the screen go black when you turn it off instead of it showing my wallpaper forever? Well, it could if you used an e-paper display like the Kingro K1, a full-on smartphone promising 400 hours of standby battery life. But are there enough benefits to consider switching to e-ink? Or is it more like e-stink? Hey. The Fujitsu ScanSnap iX1500 allows users to easily manage, edit and scan documents, business cards, receipts, and photos, and well, pretty much anything. Check it out at the link in the video description. We're gonna get to all the downsides about this phone in a minute, but first, the benefits. Who would want this thing to begin with? Well, the company's Indiegogo campaign advertises it as being optimized for eye health because as long as you're in a brightly lit room, the phone doesn't have to emit any harmful blue light for you to see the screen. That's because unlike the LCD or OLED screens on most phones, e-ink displays don't work by shining light through a pixel and into your eye. Instead, they're what's called reflective displays, where the light around you either reflects off or is absorbed by the white and black parts of the screen, just like most other objects around you, like my t-shirt or this banana. The K1 is certainly easy on the eyes, and I personally love reading on it, and it even comes with a Kindle app pre-installed. Sure, the phone is only black and white, but that can actually be seen as another benefit. Bright, saturated colors are super stimulating to the brain, but are relatively rare in nature. Your phone and its attention vying apps is full of bright colors that contribute to the urge to pull it out, even if it's just for a few seconds while you wait for an elevator to arrive or your game to load. Switching your phone to grayscale is commonly recommended as a strategy for fighting tech addiction because it makes your phone less interesting. But the K1 takes this a step further because there's no way to switch the colors back on in a moment of weakness. It's like this forever. And finally, I could also see this phone being useful for certain occupations because unlike regular screens that can be near impossible to see in direct sunlight, this one actually gets easier when it's brighter. And the battery life can be a lot better depending on your use because although it does take energy to update the screen to create an image, retaining that image like the wallpaper takes no energy at all. That's how the K1's 3100 milliamp hour battery can claim an amazing 400 hours of standby if the phone's just sitting in your work truck's glove box, but only a much more modest 20 hours of talk time. Which brings us to what it's like to actually use this as a phone. It's pretty bad. Mostly because of two interrelated problems, app support and latency. The K1 does not support the Google Play Store, so you can't easily download apps. Instead, you're supposed to use the apps that come preloaded with the phone, or any that become available later on when Kingro's own app store finally launches in what we expect to be October. And maybe the people who want this phone don't really need that many apps anyway, but the limited selection, along with the dated looking UI and the Jelly Bean era app icons, make the K1 feel like a monochrome feature phone from the early 2000s. But the reason they've made their own custom version of Android 8.1 and do not support the Play Store again comes back to the screen. The e-ink display actually cannot pass Google's device certification because they're just not designed to display animations or videos at high frame rates. And by high frame rates, I mean anything above 10 FPS, really. Now I gotta hand it to King Girl a little bit because unlike most e-readers that blink every time the screen updates, showing the inverse of the image, then all black, then all white. The K1 is a little more choosy. For example, on the kind of always on display, the screen only does a partial update of just the clock. Though it, it does still blink, which is actually pretty distracting when it's sitting on your desk. I keep thinking that I have notifications or something. But if you open up the browser and go to YouTube, you can actually watch a video. The higher frame rate comes at the cost of horrible, horrible ghosting that gets wiped away by a full blink every minute or so, but you can do it. Another thing you can do is take photos with the eight megapixel rear camera. You can even use one of several built-in filters. You just won't know what any of them look like until you view them from another device. Oh, and they, uh, for selfie fans, this prototype has a front camera, but the final device will not. So should you buy this phone? Well, unless you're just super gung-ho on having basically a smaller Kindle that can make phone calls, probably not. 
I mean, as far as mid-range phones go, with just 16 gigabytes of storage, two gigabytes of RAM and a MediaTek Helio P23, I think it's way overpriced at 350 US dollars. I mean, a Redmi Note 7 has better specs for half the price. But on top of that, I don't even agree with their main claim about eye health because the K1 does have a backlight. You can turn it completely off, but it does have one, which they claim does not emit blue light, but it looks pretty blue to me. And I'll probably be using it when I'm scrolling my phone in bed. And that's actually worse than regular phones, which nowadays almost always have a nightlight mode. So with all that said, plus the fact that ever-present image retention makes the screen a perpetual palimpsest, I'm recommending a pass to all but the most avid e-paper fans. Door peepholes are so 1990s. With a Ring video doorbell, you'll know who's at your front door without ever getting up. Their welcome kit includes their video doorbell too, their spotlight cam, a battery, and a solar security sign. The video doorbell 2 has a motion sensor camera, it's 1080p with 160 degrees of vision, it supports two-way audio, and it's either battery or 8 to 24 volt AC doorbell wiring powered. The spotlight camera features 1080p HD video, two-way talk, LED lights, and is battery or solar powered, and it's got a siren. The audio on the Ring Doorbell 2 is great, and you can turn away unwelcome guests, tell them to come right in, you know, yo, you're unwelcome, but sure, fine, you know, if it's your mother-in-law or something. And my personal favorite is telling the Amazon delivery driver to not run away after the second knock on the door. No, no, I'm coming, just a moment, please. So get some peace of mind with the Ring Welcome Kit. It's compatible with iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows PCs, and available at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching guys. If this video was awesome, hit the like button, get subscribed, and check out the links below for where you can buy awesome merch like this one. And also check out our forum, which you should totally join.